You know, I feel like I've been set up a little bit here because <laughs> just as a little backdrop, when the idea of this came about, I was out of the office. <laughs> and so as you would expect, I come back and now here I am. But the only way I'm really gonna have a chance at this is if I take the first shot. So let's focus on fair trade a little bit. It's important to step back and realize that countries throughout history have really used tariffs to establish fair trade. For us, in the United States, it actually goes back to the dawn of our nation. George Washington signed the first tariff back in 1789. Now, if you think about it, in the early 1900s, tariffs accounted for about 30% of government revenue, a pretty substantial amount. And then they enacted this thing called federal income tax. And today, tariffs only account for 1% of government revenue. So there's quite a big difference there. So I would actually argue that tariffs have nothing to do with the dollars that we're receiving. So if it's not about the dollars, then what's it about? Well, when it comes to China, it's really about protecting our intellectual property and our national security. So yes, China is our largest trading partner, but they're also the largest offender when it comes to stealing our intellectual property. Tariffs can still be quite the powerful bargaining chip to bring our partners to the negotiating table. Now for myself, if all this meant just having a few extra fake coach handbags in the marketplace, I'd be okay with that. I could look the other way. And if it meant ripping off Mickey Mouse because of pirated movies and pirated video games, I could probably, as much as it would hurt me, I could probably look the other way about that as well. But Really, can any of us look the other way when it comes to our national security? So the points I would throw out to you, how would you feel if I told you China has stolen technology related to our F-35 fighter jet, our B-52 bomber, and even plans related to our space shuttle? See, I think we're focused on the wrong thing. The question's not really what's the cost if the United States enacts tariffs, I think the real question is what's the cost if the United States chooses not to enact tariffs? And I think after hearing those great points, even my counterpart will agree with me on that. <laughs> well, Scott, <laughs> I think using tariffs as a negotiating tactic to get better trade deal for United States can be a dangerous game. So you see, tariffs easily turn into trade wars, and economists has already warned us that this will be bad for consumers and U.S. businesses in the form of low economic growth, less jobs, and higher prices in the stores. <coughs> and if we look at the example that Ken brought up about the Smooth Haley Act, many believe that has deepened the Great Depression in the 1930s, and some even think that that has planted the seeds for World War II. So Scott, I think using tariffs as a trade tactic is really not a good idea. Okay, those are good <laughs> points, Ying. So I think I'm gonna have trouble getting you to come to my side on fair trade. Well, let's focus on jobs for a minute. <laughs> now, yes, for those in the back, my hat does say, Make America Great Again. <laughs> and I think, I think, maybe with the exception of one, we can all agree that the fastest way to make America great again is through jobs. Now, throughout history, governments have been choosing which industries to protect and which industries not to protect. This is not a new concept. We can go back to the sugar farmers here in the United States. Or if we go over to Europe, look at the automobile industry, or even the steel and aluminum industries that we're discussing today. So as a result of the announced tariffs, the steel industry is expected to add 20,000 jobs. And for us, we don't have to look too far to see the positive impact of that. Just across the river in Granite City, Illinois. Earlier this year, U.S. Steel announced that they were going to bring back 500 jobs to the area. You may have, earlier this week, they increased that number. 
Now they expect to bring back 800 jobs to the area. To quote the mayor of Granite City, these are jobs with wages that you can actually raise a family on. Ying, are you with me? <laughs> Scott, I definitely agree that steel tariff was going to help the steel worker and bring back steel jobs. But do you know that for every one steel workers, the tariff will help, 80 manufacturing jobs could be impacted. And that's because steel tariff is going to increase the prices for steel and manufacturer who need steel for their products will have to look for a way to lower their costs. So one way may be to limit wage growth and God forbid, they might have to cut jobs. So the last time U.S. tried to help the steel industry by in imposing steel tariff was in 2002 under George W. Bush. And during that time, we as an economy has lost 200,000 jobs. So Scott, that is including the 20,000 jobs that we may add to the steel industry, but you can see that the manufacturing job in impact is, is very negative. So at the end, I would say <laughs> tariff is not really a good idea. <laughs> she gets me every time when she starts throwing out facts. So. <laughs> like, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, I hope you can see just kind of in our little back and forth that there are a lot of moving pieces when it comes to tariffs and potential trade wars. What I want to do is I think it's a good time to kind of step back and have John Mira talk a little bit more on how this might actually be showing up in the markets.